you know, people still smoke cigarettes. How many studies have been done to show you that cigarettes cause cancer, that cigarettes are harmful, that cigarettes cause many health consequences, and cigars as well. But people still smoke cigarettes, even though there are documented studies that smoking cigarettes are bad. I'm going somewhere with this. Um, I was watching a video, one of those, why I finance cards versus paying cash. I didn't even comment on it. I left it alone because it hit me when I was watching this video. People knowingly smoke cigarettes and this can create health consequences down the road. And they know this. They know this. And I'm, I'm beginning here to think. I'm like, okay, people are still smoking cigarettes. People are still drinking. People are still doing drugs. And they know that doing these things can potentially have a very bad outcome on their health. And they will still do it. And it, <clears throat> it got me to thinking. All right. I pay cash for cars. I was paying cash for cars before I was a millionaire. And even though there's been documented studies that financing cars for the average person, and the average person is 9% of the population, it's a, it's a bad idea. It's not a good thing to do. Even with all this information, people will still finance cars. I was watching this video where this guy bought a Corvette and his monthly car payment is $1,600 per month. $1,600 per month. He also has a Hellcat, which he has a monthly payment on. And I think he has a Jeep. So I think this guy has three car payments. Three. So he's paying three to $4,000 a month for three cars sitting in his driveway. He, he lives in a rather modest house and I would be surprised if this guy has any investments or any other things. He has really good credit, which allows him to do this. And I was just sitting here thinking, gee, they want to do what they want to do regardless of the consequences. It doesn't matter. They want to do what they want to do. Bitcoin. Bitcoin is like that pretty girl that has to clap, maybe HIV, you hit it, you catch something. Because it was such a good hit, you go back. People want to do what they want to do. I remember years and years ago, when I was working in the TMC, at Schofield Barracks, this guy comes in, he's got gonorrhea. And we go ahead and treat him and everything. About three months later, this guy comes back in, he has gonorrhea again. And I'm like, what happened? And he's like, man, I had to hit it again. He got gonorrhea from the same chick twice. And that is part of what I fail to understand. You guys are not stupid. You guys just want to do what you want to do. That's, that's it in a nutshell. And that is a failure on my part to understand that y'all want to do what you want to do. The future consequences be damned. Don't matter. You want to do what you want to do. Because I, I saw with the video where, you know, why I finance cars and everywhere I was chiming in and chiming in and someone was saying that most personal finance channels preach against financing cars for good reason. And he was like, what about those of us who like cars? And I was just sitting there. He wants to do what he wants to do, even if it's going to harm him in the future. 
because I read his comment like three times and I'm like, you're watching personal finance channels that are telling you not to finance cars, but because you want that new car smell, you want to do what you want to do, you're going to ignore that advice and do what you want to do. And that is a big failure on my part to understand human nature. And going forward, I am not going to fight human nature. I'm not going to fight it. Y'all can do what y'all want to do. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to show you that what I'm doing is better than what you're doing. And then you can deal with that evidence and then make your decisions from there. I'm going to stop preaching. I'm going to stop trying to educate people. Now, on Savage Finance, I am going to do some expo expose videos because there's a lot of BS in the personal finance space. A lot of BS. A ton of BS. So I'm going to be doing that over there. But over here, I, I'm going to leave y'all alone. You want to buy Bitcoin? Knock yourself out. You want to finance a car? Knock yourself out. Go right ahead. You grown. Do what you want. Now, when you're 60 years old and you don't have no money and you got to live with your kids that don't like you because you cannot provide for yourself, maybe that's when this message would be like, well, maybe I should have worked a little harder. Maybe I should have did X, Y, and Z. Maybe. Maybe that's when this message will penetrate. But until you fall down and hit your head real hard, y'all ain't going to listen. Y'all ain't going to listen. Ain't gonna listen. It, it is um, sad. It is a lesson that I have to learn that you are going to do what humans do. You're gonna do what you want to do, regardless of someone giving you good wisdom. I should say there's a smaller segment of y'all that will listen. There was a smaller segment of y'all that will listen. But once again, the whole financing of cars. I was paying cash for cars before I was a millionaire. So you don't have to be a millionaire to pay cash for cars. You have to make some money. You have to go ahead and let that money go. And let's go ahead and talk about that. I keep hearing this alternate theory that the reason that I don't pay cash for cars is because I have my money over here working. Really? All right. Um, in my mind, having a business, you're working for your money, is better than having your money working for you because I've done a lot of calculations. Um, your money can only work so hard. You're going to need time in the market for your uh, money to really perform. And we're talking two, three decades of your money in the market working. And at that point, your money will begin to substantially work for you. But we're looking at two to three decades of your money in the market working. Two to three decades. And um, I'm about to go ahead and lay something out for you. As you know, I started Mac Daddy Autos. I started car rentals. And if I didn't have this yard bird who kept the car for 10 days, I lost about $500 there. Um, and if I had placed all my vehicles on hire car, I would have made $10,000 this month. Now, why is that significant? There's only $118,000 at play. So I had $118,000 make me almost six. I don't have a full month of data. So in June, I'm probably going to do twelve dollars or $14,000. Um, probably going to buy some more cars. So once I, I get all the numbers together. But essentially, let me go ahead and tell you. My... $118, $118,000, right? It's going to make me about $5,500. Now, 
Name me a rental property that you can get for $118,000 that's going to cash flow at $5,000. Please name me one. I have a car on the on the website that did $1,600. Had someone rent it for a month, right off the rift. Rented it for a month. $1,600. That is... And this asset only cost me fourteen thousand. That's going to happen again. I'm going to have cars that are cheaper than real estate that will make real estate type returns without the investment in real estate. Like I am so gun ho about this car rental business and this car sales business. You you know, give me some time. I'm gonna put my foot into it, but. I just told you something that you could do. You could start with one car, and in 10 years, starting with one car, you will be making more money than any investment portfolio. But once again, people still smoke cigarettes. People do what they want to do. People do what they want to do. So what if I'm telling you of a better investment strategy? Uh, you're still going to have a bunch of people pile into dividend stocks. I did uh, a video exposing. Uh, to me, dividend stock investing is a subpar investment strategy. It, for me, it, it's just, I'm like, I could take $118,000 and create a business in three months that's producing nine thousand a month, nine to ten thousand dollars per month from a hundred and eighteen thousand dollar investment. Working four hours a month. But you want to actually believe and put all this money, and literally, this is what's so funny. Let's say I just decided to leave the car business the way it was. I did not add any more cars to the car business. And let's say I averaged 10,000 a month and I made 120,000 a month for my 118. So the first year I get all my money back. So the second year this car business becomes a cash cow. Now my $118,000 investment is creating livable income. live off $9,000. I can actually, well, I, I'll do a whole different, separate video because, you know, the, my lifestyle is a little complicated because um, I was having a conversation with a friend and I was like, my personal spend, the money that I spend on personal stuff because um, my cars, are, well, they're paid for it. I don't have car payments. Uh, the house is covered by the business. My health insurance is covered by the business. A lot of my expenses are covered by the business. So I could like, the way it is now, if I had $9,000, well, actually I have more than $9,000 a month coming in. I actually have $20,000 coming in for my, my, pay, for my pay stubs. Um, I don't spend the majority of the money. So let's just say, fast forward in the future, I'm 65 years old and I have 10 years from now and I put these cars on the platform and I sold cars and then replaced cars and I just kept it at eight cars. In 10 years, this business will put a million dollars in my pocket just the way that it is. A million dollars of livable, spendable cash income. But you've got people who will put up a dividend stock portfolio video and people will go nuts. Once again, the fantasy, people are lazy. I'm just gonna keep it a buck. People are lazy and this fantasy that has seduced people into Getting into dividend stock, even though it's a subpar investment strategy, the fantasy is I don't have to do nothing. It's complete, 100% passive income. That is the 
fantasy, well, actually, it's true. If you invest in a dividend stock portfolio, it is 100% passive income. Money just comes to you. You don't have to do anything. That massive level of American laziness, that massive level of people who don't want to do nothing is creating a situation where people are leaving dollars on the table to collect nickels. You're leaving dollars, like, like I said, I just gave you an investment strategy that you can start off with one car in 10 years, get up to $9,000 a month. Keep your job, not lose your mind, not worry about a uh, wild market, stock market place swings and stuff. A lot of people, some people will listen, most folks are not gonna listen. Um, essentially, People want to do what is sexy. Bitcoin is very sexy. Uh, there's numerous Bitcoin stories out there. Uh, but once again, I have to tell myself, people still smoke cigarettes. People still smoke cigarettes. Even though there is documentation that smoking cigarettes is a very bad thing for health people still smoke cigarettes and people will continue to finance cars this is why I am going to get into the buy here pay here business you know uh, I had someone and we were having a very good conversation last night and she's like who's your customer and all this really really good questions and I was like this business is ain't gonna go nowhere anytime soon you know Aaron's rent to own Aaron's Rent to Own was founded in 1955. People have been renting washers, dryers, bedroom furniture since 1955. Let me go ahead and give you the evolving uh, business model. First thing I'm going to do is put the cars on the rental platform to get some income coming in. That's the first thing I'm going to do. And then periodically, I'm going to sell the first cars because they're gonna have mileage on them. But I'm gonna sell them because essentially, at that point, if I sold the car, like I had to buy here and pay here a lot, and let's say someone saw an Acura and they came on there and we had a price of $12,000 for that car, they said, I'll give you $10,000 cash money for that car right now. I would take their $10,000, you know why? Because that $10,000 is 100% profit. 100% profit. I made $10,000. I rented the car for, like, say, two years, made um, $20,000, then sold it for ten. dollars So this car that cost me $12,000, I made $32,000 profit. I made 3x on that, in that asset. So I'm like, yeah, I'm with that. I'm with that. I'm with that. I'm with that. Because essentially, there, there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to do and I'm going to be talking about on the YouTube channel. Like, once again, I'm, I'm getting ready to stay more in my lane because I can give you guys the best advice, the best help. And once again, people smoke cigarettes. People are going to finance cars. People are going to do this stuff because it's what they want to do. It's just what they want to do. It's just what they want to do. I mean, I can give you good steward, and I, I had someone who's like, man, your prediction's been on point. You know, you're, you're rarely wrong. My friend, she said this. She said, you know, a few things I said, you know, she's like, I don't know about that, but she said, later on, it turned out you were 100% right. She's like, you are mostly right. And um, I, I thanked her for that. And going forward I'm going to kind of stay in my lane because people be getting emotional and moist when I be pointing out their BS because there ain't nothing there is nothing you know you can convince me that financing cars unless I'm, I'm about to get into this I am going to finance cars for the business that makes sense 
but financing a car for personal use does not make sense to me. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. Uh, I'm gonna get a business line of credit, I'm gonna buy more cars, and I will be financing cars for business purposes. Why? Because these cars go on the road, and they make me money. But like this, my personal vehicles, I'm not financing my personal vehicles. I will continue to pay cash for my personal vehicles. I will continue to pay cash for the personal stuff. But business, that's a whole nother ball game. Yeah, I would go into massive debt for business. Massive debt for business. I would do that all day long, because that makes sense. But you cannot convince me. You can put up all the videos while you finance, and you want to play this, this arbitrage game of financing the vehicle because you have all these other investments over here. And to me, and I'm gonna, you know, I may hurt someone's feelings, I don't really don't care. To me, when I hear that I want to finance a car because I cannot pull money out this investment, you don't make enough money. In my opinion, you don't make enough money to drive that car. Because if you cannot pay cash for it, I don't think you can afford it. Your FICO score says, hey, I can make payments. And for me, paying $1,500, $1,600, $2,000, $3,000, dollars a month as a car payment is absolutely ridiculous. It's just ridiculous to me. I, I'm not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. To me, that's just stupid. Once again, I may hurt some people's feelings, but I really don't care because that's how I feel. And, you know, as I go on this financial journey and I start to learn more and more things and I start to talk to older people who are financially set for life, I begin to realize that these money methodologies, these habits I have will serve me well paying cash for cars, not buying a whole bunch of cars, actually works. Now, this is something else that um, I'm starting to see. I'm literally seeing restaurants that are closing because they don't have enough staff. Because people are getting this government money. And the government money is destroying the initiative for people to go to work. Why work when you can make the same money or in some cases more money sitting at home? Why work? And I feel, and I'm gonna explain this because someone didn't you know, really understand it, that how grandma was in a lot of trouble when granddad died. See, when grandma and granddad was alive, granddad paid all the bills, he, he, he did everything. So grandma didn't even know how to pay a bill. She know how to balance a checkbook because she didn't have to do that because granddad did it. And then, you know, here she is 70 years old and granddad dies. And now her kids have got to do that stuff for her because she don't know how to do it. We are moving toward a dependent class of people who will not know how to do for themselves because of this government money. And it's going to be ugly if you are a child born as part of this dependent class, it's gonna be ugly. Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna get indoctrinated in dependent class 101. You're not gonna know how to start a business. You're not gonna know how to be a go-getter. You're going to be initiated in this dependent class philosophy of just sitting at home waiting on a check, getting that government cheese, going out with your EBT card, and it's going to be sad. And I feel that that segment of America is going to swell in the next 10 years. The dependent class, the um, you know, poor class, the number of people who are living with somebody because they can't live on their own, I, I, it's, it's about to get back because this, this is something that I've noticed. There are a ton of DoorDash videos on YouTube. DoorDash, Uber Eats, one guy, he made $8,000 in a month because he did 
Uber Eats for 12 hours a day. And that is a signal. That is a social signal of what's going on in America right now. That these videos are taking off because a lot of people are looking for ways to make money. A lot of people are looking for ways to make money. And it is, man, that's, that's a load. Just saw this RV with a trailer that's almost as big as the RV. It's just as tall and he's rolling. He's in the fast lane. He's zooming. But we, we have this dependent class that's just going to continue to grow. And I feel bad for the children of these people. Because these children are not going to be exposed to anything nice. They're going to be exposed to poverty. They're going to be exposed to um, all kinds of bad things. Because they're going to be part of this dependent class. And, you know, it, it is just sad. It's just really, really sad. But this government money, which I feel... It's going to keep flowing. I actually just think there's going to be another stimulus check this year. I just have a feeling there's going to be another stimulus check. Um, also, I feel this year for football season, the stands are going to be packed. Because 50% of Americans have been vaccinated. And like I said, by Christmas, 90% will be. So we're, we're, going, we're moving in that direction. But this government money, it, it's, it's bad. It's bad. And, you know, I'm, I'm that old man on the porch. Get off my lawn. Because many of you out there is like, man, we need help. We need money. Why are you talking bad about them giving the people money? Because the same reason I talk bad about people financing cars. When you finance the car, the pain, the bad effects don't happen when you finance car. They happen years, years later. And years and years later, we're going to see some harmful consequences from all of this free government money, the prop up economy, the stimulus economy. We're in the stimulus economy right now. Right now, housing prices, and I don't think housing prices are coming down for the next two years, are at record highs because of an artificial bubble. What is going on with housing is not a byproduct of the natural economic cycle. It is a stimulus-based side effect of this housing market. And I don't know, because essentially, once you start stimulating, you gotta keep stimulating. So I don't know where this is gonna end up in the future, but I do feel that the outcome is gonna be bad because you can only kick the can down the road for so long. You can only kick it down the road for so long. But we will see. Black people business. I've been doing a lot of YouTube watching during my break and I've noticed black folks are gravitating toward trucking, box trucking, Amazon Relay, Hot shot trucking, um, medical commodities. What's another one? Black folks are moving towards Toro. Uh, and also, I look at the businesses that white folks move towards affiliate marketing, drop shipping, Amazon FBA. And it's very interesting, the businesses that black folks grab, like, just do a box truck video search in YouTube, and you'll see none but black folks. And I wonder why. Because I think this is another reason that I get so much hate, because I'm doing something that most black folks can't understand. I remember years and years and years ago, I was dating this girl, and we were just talking about our careers. And I was like, yeah, I sell books. I wrote a book and I sell books. This is how I make money. I lived in a nice place, drove a BMW. And she could not, she 
just couldn't see it. She asked me like six different ways how I made money because she could not see it. And I feel that this is a big issue in the black community. If you cannot see it, you cannot feel it. it if it doesn't make sense, black folks ain't gonna do it. Um, black folks are not going to do it. Right now, there's, uh, Google this, low content books. This is the thing. These are coloring books, these are journals that people put on Amazon and they sell. They're very easy to put together and some people are making a lot of money with low content books. Mostly a white crowd. I've not seen one black YouTuber do a video. Not to say there aren't any black folks doing it, but it's just interesting how you see people move into certain business models. Because I'm getting ready to um, do some stuff very differently than I've ever done it before. Because um, once again, like I said, I'm pulling back from trying to educate people and tell people the truth because people, people smoke cigarettes. People know cigarettes cause cancer. They, but they still, they still smoke cigarettes. So me sitting there telling you that financing cars is hazardous to your long-term financial health, that means, that's meaningless. Because you still want to go out and finance a car, you want to buy a car, you want to make car payments. And I feel that because you cannot conceptualize going to a dealership and paying cash for a car, that this is like Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster. It's something you hear about, but you've never seen. Um, and YouTube ain't gonna help because once you have all of these people out here talking about financing cars, financing cars, financing cars, and with little regard that most of the people who watch them, if they finance a car, it's gonna be harmful. They don't give a, they don't give a damn about you. They don't give a damn about your long-term financial prognosis. Mm -mm. It's all about those views. It's all about those views. And, you know, um, I'm going to try to do something a little different um, by showing success. And hopefully that motivates people. Because, I mean, I just hung my head when I saw this video. Because essentially, the great American credit indoctrination system has people by the throat. They cannot imagine going to a dealership and paying cash for a car. They can't imagine stroking the check. Now, which is what's funny. One of the reasons that prices in the housing market are so high is because of cash buyers. There's a lot of cash buyers in the market. These folks are paying cash for these houses. It's kind of funny that people, well, I guess these folks who are paying cash for the houses are still are probably paying cash for their cars. But it, it strikes me as strange that someone would pay cash for a house and finance a car. I, that doesn't make any sense to me. I don't think that's gonna go down. But yeah, we're going to move into a different tactic. We're going to do something a little different. Um, and like I said, on Savage Finance, I'm you know I went after Andre Jack because I think he's full of crap. Uh, he built his YouTube channel on dividend stock investing and then switched it up because it, dividend stock investing is a suboptimal investing strategy because you need so much money to buy so much dividend stock. Like where he sits right now, he has $350,000. And in 20 years, that will be 1.6 million. But he he will not retire early. In 20 years, he'll be 50. That's not, I guess that's retiring early, you know, 50 versus 65. So I guess that's still retiring early. But one of the reasons this is YouTube income and help him add 150,000 to that dividend stock portfolio when it took him seven years to get the first 200,000. Very interesting. But um, 
one of the things that I feel is going to happen is the people who stop trying to cheat or manipulate the system like um, NBC, CNBC, CNBC make it as the Dodge Corn guy on here in the comments are ripping this guy apart because essentially he gambled and he won. That's all he did. He did not do anything financially stunning. He gambled and he won the bet. That's what he did. And once we get into a place where, like I said, I've done numerous videos, marketplace fundamentals at the moment don't matter because we're in this government propped up, stimulated economy. Like right now, if all of these people who were in forbearance, if their houses were coming on the market, housing prices would have crashed. They would have not jumped up. But I feel that they're gonna keep protecting these people. And part of me is like, first time ever that the American people got protected and got money and got bailed out. So part of me is like, you know, because uh, corporate welfare, the corporate games, that's been going on since corporations existed. So I don't really know what's going to happen in the future. But I do know that the content of this channel is getting ready to switch up. I'm just not going to be talking about certain things because when I go around pissing on people's dreams, they get angry. They get, they get militant. And, um, so we're gonna be talking about building businesses, being successful, um, getting ready to launch some new training. And that's where we're gonna move into because I'm getting ready to leave a lot of stuff alone. Um, I feel that Bitcoin's gonna do the same thing it did in 2017, but you know what? I, don't, I shouldn't really give a damn if you make money or don't make money from Bitcoin. I need to worry about my own money, my own business, and I'm getting ready to focus more on my businesses because from a philosophical standpoint, as a member of society, I care what happens to society, but so many people just don't want to do the right thing. Smoking cigarettes, just don't want to do the right thing, just don't. I don't care if you can tell them, like, look, if you keep walking on this road, you're gonna get mugged. I'm just telling you. And they gonna keep walking on that road because they like walking on that road. And then when they get mugged, they're gonna wanna be bailed out by society. They're gonna wanna be bailed out. They're gonna wanna have some um, type of program, some type of help. I, I can tell you, you keep walking on this road, you're gonna get mugged and people like, I'm gonna take my chances. And as an adult, that's funny. And this, this kind of brings up a really philosophical question. If you knowingly do something stupid that results in you being harmed, should society bail you out? Or should society just let you swing? Now, I'm kind of of the opinion that society should just let you swing because you made that grown man, grown woman decision and it ended up bad. And I feel that if society lets people swing, don't bail them out. A lot more people will stop doing this stupid stuff. But right now, we're in the great uh, stimulated economy. We're in the great prop up economy. And I feel we're going to be here for about two years. And it's going to be really interesting um, how this shakes out. Because honestly, I don't really know which way we're going to go. Um, I do feel that the dependent socialist class is going to swell. I, I'm pretty firm about that. But I don't know when real marketplace fundamentals are going to kick back in. Because right now, it's all being pushed off. It's being pushed off by the Fed. It's being pushed off about stimulus it, you know it's just being pushed off so we're, we're we're living in like an alternate universe right now 
and I don't know when this is this this is gonna stop. I don't know. I have no clue. But that's your little chit chat for the day. I will talk to you guys later. That's just what was on my mind. And we're going to start a different level of content as we go forward. Hopefully, you guys are having a good one.